So I'm now gonna turn it over to Lily DeMoria. Lily. Thank you, Robin. And thank you to all of you who are on with us today. This is a very important subject. Uh, there you see a picture of my wonderful family. It's my older son and uh, my younger son who I spoke about at the beginning who has a developmental disability and has really been the drive to um, the creation of the foundation and the employment uh, program that we run. Uh, we are a nonprofit and um, we, um, as I said before, our commission is to create employment opportunities for young adults with unique abilities by building long-term partnerships. Partnerships, that's what makes us very unique because I will, as I will explain, we do not do placements. Um, our partnership means that we will be with you the length of the employee's um, employment and provide support, not just for the employee, but for the uh, employer and their staff. Um, we have seen over the last four years that we definitely have fostered hope, confidence, and independence um, and ensured successful employment outcomes. We actually have um, probably a 20 some young adults that work full time and have been able to work to over 32 hours with um, 401ks and healthcare benefits. And our goal is full time employment. We start them with part time um, because that's the best way that we can transition the staff and the employee to acclimate to this new work environment. But our goal is that they become part of the family of that organization and that they become full-time employees. Um, I know Robin mentioned you know, about the benefits that some families are hesitant, but we don't uh, promote that because we can't, as parents, be around forever. And the more successful and the more independent that your uh, son or daughter can become uh, and reach their maximum potential, the better off that they're going to be. We have a very unique process in the way that um, we go about um, doing this. So first of all, I wanna explain a little bit about something that's called VR, which is vocational rehabilitation. Um, and it's a federal program that is state mandated um, that um, provides funds for employment among other things for people with disabilities. Um, but the federal mandate only allows them to provide support for 90 days if it's employment services and for 150 days if it's for supported employment services. And most young adults need supported employment services. Um, that they considered a placement and that's why I said we are very unique and different in our, in our model because we uh, provide extended services that nobody else provides. And when I say extended services, it means that after 150 days, we don't just say, okay, this is your employee and we trained and we helped you and now we're gone and you're never gonna hear from us again. You're gonna hear from us forever. We never leave. So we have employees that have been working for over three years and our job coaches are still going out and checking on the employer and the employee and we will go back, we will retrain, we will train a new task, we will help increase their hours as the, the years go by. Um, sometimes we have issues after a year of employment, two years of employment, it could be a social issue, it could be a task related issue and we're there to help. Uh, my job coaches always tell me that, you know, they're more like life coaches instead of just job coaches. So let me tell you a little bit about what is a job coach. We call them employment specialists, but what the job coach really does is they are one, the liaison between the employer and the um, employee. Um, they train the employee. So that takes away a lot of hours from the employer. They are able to focus on their work while the job coach is focusing on making sure that your employee is trained to the best of their ability. Um, that job coach will go in and will help preparing the employee from the very beginning. So our process starts with the employee that comes in, they are, um, we determine if they're eligible for our program. Um, and it's based on a few different factors. The one, the family, um, we need families and 
um, young adults that are uh, on the same goals and expectations as we are, uh, they want the same thing, which is eventually employment leads to independence. So they wanna try to be as independent as they possibly can. Um, they do want a, a full-time job in the future, if that's possible. It's not always possible, but if it's possible, we that's the goal. Um, and so they go through a screening process where um, we meet with the family, we, we meet with the employee, we determine if they're independent enough um, to start working, uh, if they really want to work. But sometimes, you know, parents come in and they're the ones who want them to work and the young adult is really not ready. Um, and so we go through all of that. We have um, a meeting um, where we meet with the parents then the next step is what we call pre-placement training. And it's a curriculum of 20 hours. So the first 10 hours is, is in our office and it's focused on getting their resumes ready, uh, interviewing skills, applying for jobs and workplace interactions and workplace behaviors. After that is when they would go to an interview when we feel that there is a good match. So there's two processes happening here. One is for the employee and parallel is the process for the employer because the employer first has to buy into our program and buy into hiring a young adult with a unique ability. And they, everything that Robin talked about, about you know, being flexible and being open and, and seeing the ability and not the disability and being able to see what an asset this person can be to your company because a lot of times or to your department, um, there's, there's plenty of, of jobs for them to do. There's plenty of tasks for them to do just about anywhere. Um, and a lot of the times those tasks do not want to be done by your employees or they get bored sitting in front of a computer all day where for a young adult with autism, they're not bored. They're, they thrive because they want to be sitting in front of a computer all day and they can be the best data entry employee you've ever seen but you didn't even consider them because you met them and they were uh, different. Um, they didn't interview well, they didn't express themselves well. So it wasn't even a consideration until you see that they're gonna have support and that you're gonna have support. And then it, it changes the dynamics of the possibilities that this person might have. Um, so as I'm gonna stop here as far as the employee part of it, because I want you to know what happens with, from the employer part of it, which is where we do what's called job carving. And so we do look at job descriptions that are available uh, like at Baptist and other bigger organizations. But when we work with smaller companies, more family owned businesses, we go in and we look at what are their needs? Um, how can we help you become a better business? How can our employee benefit your employees? And so we do what's called job carving, which is basically taking you know, a little bit from here and a little bit from this department and a little bit from that department and creating a job description. When we create that job description, then we look at a match and we look to see what individual we have kind of in what we call our bullpen uh, that has the skills, the best match that we can find for the employer. And nobody else does it this way. Um, because we kind of are coming in the back door. We're looking at the employer's needs first. We're not looking at, do you have a receptionist position and then try to find somebody to fit that receptionist position. Um, and this model and our process has turned out to be extremely successful. We have very, very good um, employment outcomes. Then um, they go to an interview, which they're prepared for. And um, if they get hired, um, then they go through 10 more hours of pre-training, which is usually on site, but it's not an official start date. Um, so what we do is we go on and we teach them. So for example, let's say that part of their job tasks is scanning or a copy machine. Well, everybody's copy machine is different. So there's no point in teaching them how to do a, uh, use a copy machine in our office when yours could be completely different. Um, so we take them through that process our job coach then gets trained by whoever the supervisor is going to be. So our job coach learns the job before the employee learns the job. 
and she will go in for a day. Right now I say she, well, I'm sorry, no, we now have a male job coach too. So one of our job coaches will go in and um, kind of go through all the tasks that are on that job description and learn how to do the job um, and then bring in the employee as an orientation and then go through and we do then a task skill assessment. So as you can see, our process is very intense. Um, the task skill assessment is we go through every task that's on that job description to determine the level of training that is needed or whether there's any training at all. So if we show them, this is how you work the copy machine and, they, and we say, okay, make 10 copies and they can do it, then okay, we don't need to train them on the copy machine. But if we go to the scanning machine and they're like, uh, nope, don't quite know how to use this, then we know that that requires more training. And we do that with every single task on their job description. And um, before they can start working, we uh, provide a one hour disability awareness and sensitivity presentation with the employer and their staff. And we ask that as many people go to this um, training as possible. And from what we've heard um, from over 50 employer partners that we have, that is one of the things that they find the most beneficial because it puts everybody on the same page. Um, it allows, <coughs> excuse me, it allows um, the staff to understand, to understand the challenges, the benefits, and to understand the disability. A lot of times people have preconceived notions about disabilities. And we try to make sure that, that um, those questions are answered. And we feel that they um, are very comfortable in that setting. The employment uh, project, as I spoke about before, um, is a long-term meaningful employment for young adults. And it's customized employment model, which is evidence-based practice um, that um, we take the specific needs of the employer and match them with the interests and the skill set of the employee. So here are some of the benefits for the employers and benefits for employees. So as you can see, not only do we do the training, but the tax credits, but we support throughout the whole employment process. And I can't tell you how what a relief it is for employers when we tell them, you know, we're going to hold your hand all the way through this. We're never going to go. The job coach you have access to by email, by text, by phone call. You have access to our office. You have access to our employment director um, at any time with any issue that you feel that you or your staff needs assistance with. Um, and some of those things that are on there, I'm not going to go over again because Robert, um, Robin kind of talked about it, is that, you know, uh, businesses that employ young adults with unique abilities are seen more favorably. And people will go to their coffee shop instead of another coffee shop because of the fact that they're feeling a social responsibility and they want to be part of that. They want, they want to feel that they are a part of that. Um, so the benefits for the employees is that we're not just job coaches. Like I said, you know, we are there for them. Um, we, we assist them, we train them, we um, help with social skills, we... Uh, provide guidance in and out of the workplace. Um, our young adults create extremely uh, close relationships with their job coaches, and they are always there to help them uh, with any kind of um, issues at work. And the, the goal is to support and ensure job retention because getting the job guys is not really the, the hardest part. It's sustaining the job for long periods of time. And we do everything that we can to prevent little issues that come up before they become big issues. And then HR finds out about it. And then, oh my God, we have a problem that impacts the organization. We don't get there because we are in such close communication with the supervisors and with the employees that we can prevent those bigger issues to arise. So this is our model of support. Um, as you will see, um, I already explained the top part about the job assessment, the carving, um, the task skill assessment that's done by a vocational services coordinator, um, and then the accommodations that the employment director and employment specialists make. Those accommodations are always discussed with the, the department and the supervisor. Um, it could be anything from 
color coding a filing system to color coding a phone system to um, something that is in script and it needs to be printed out. Some instructions that are visual, we create a binder uh, with every single job task that they have and it has instructions. And that binder serves as a tool, not just for the employee, but for the people, their coworkers, because they then know how this person was trained to do that job. And they can go back and say, oh, if, when they have questions, they can go back and say, oh, hey, you know, Charlie, remember you have your binder, let's go look at your binder and let's look at the visual prompts that you have to make copies. Um, and so it really depends on their functioning level and their reading level and their math level. So it, it is all dependent on that young adult's needs and what they need to do the best job that they can for the employer. So when they start working, when their official start date um, begins, we try to start with 20 hours. We, like I said, our goal is full time. Those 20 hours can become 30 to 40 hours really quick, depending on their learning curve and depending on the needs of the employer. We have employees that after three weeks, they're like, no, we need them more. Um, you know, we don't wanna wait the three months. Our model is, part-time for the first three months because we feel that that's a good period of time, but it can be two months or it can be four months. Um, and so basically what you're gonna get when you hire one of um, the young adults that we support is that they're gonna come in and they're gonna come in with their job coach. For the whole 20 hours that they are there, our job coach will be with them, training them, showing them um, for every minute that they are there. So it's 20 hours a week, four hours a day, and that can fluctuate between, usually it's usually not one week. It could, it could be, but usually it's two to three weeks. Um, then after two or three weeks, we would go to the supervisor and we say, okay, so we think they're ready for an independent day and we'd like to go down to four days a week. Um, and let's see how they do, so I'm not gonna be here next Wednesday. Um, so then when they go back, they find out how did they do? Okay, no, they did great. They did everything. You know, they were punctual. They were on time. There were no issues. Okay, we'll try another independent day. So we will do that for two or three weeks. And then we taper off to three times a week and then two times a week and then one time a week. And that takes about three months. Now, I want you to understand that during that period, we can always, we all, there, there can be times when we go back to every day or we go back to, we're down to one day a week and we go back to three days a week because either they need the assistance or there's a new job test that's assigned that now needs to be trained again. And so never hold back just because they're working 20 hours or just because they have their job description, but you've identified a new task that you need help or somebody in your department tells you that they need help with. And you know they'll come and say, I, I, um, I need help with scanning. Um, and so, they, you know, they'll come back in and they will um, do the scanning and teach them the scanning and that could take a week um, or two or whatever it takes and then they taper back down again. And so it's a, a process that's always flowing um, and we can come back after six months, after a year, if, if we need to. So in addition to the job coaching and the intense uh, support that we provide, we have what's called Power Up for Jobs. And that's a peer group meeting um, that we hold once a month. It's mandatory. All of our young adults have to attend. And every month there is different uh, themes that are based on work-related um, assistance, basically. Um, but it can go from social media, uh, which can affect their, their um, performance at work. Um, it can be about relationships because maybe they think that the girl who sits next to them in the cubby is cute and they don't know how to ask them properly if they want to go out. Um, it can have to do with independence, self-esteem, conflict with a coworker, not knowing how to um, address the person. Uh, so the whole point of the power up is to decrease their stress, to build a support network to give them uh, opportunity to develop relationships and to give them strategies that will help them in workplace interactions. If the young adult needs uh, assistance in things that might not relate to the job that they're doing at the moment, but it can definitely impact 
the work that they might be doing three months from now because the issue could come up. Now within themselves, they get an opportunity to brainstorm and talk about, well, this happened to me and this is how I dealt with it or this is how my, my coach helped me deal with it. Sometimes we uh, coach them on how to write a proper email to their uh, supervisor um, asking for vacation time. And is it time to ask for vacation time? Um, during, uh, obviously like the rest of the world during this pandemic, um, everything has changed. And so we very quickly pivoted to a virtual world. Within a, within a week, we had virtual um, hours for all our job coaches so that the young adults could call in during a certain time. And then we established what's called the DMF Stay Connected. And it's through Google Classroom. And there is a variety of classes that are offered to all of our young adults. Anything from cooking to working out to uh, music, um, to traveling all around the world where they are introduced to a different country, um, stress relief, wellness, um, all different types of subjects. Now, as the time went on and we saw that this was getting longer and that we had more young adults uh, out of work. And by the way, I did see at the beginning, somebody asked a question on the Q&A about, did we find it that it was more difficult during this time because everybody's working remotely. Yes, absolutely. It has definitely affected because a lot of the jobs um, that our young adults have are dependent on job, on work that is produced by people who, is, who are now working at home. So the workload is not there. So we definitely have taken a hit. Um, they have had their hours cut. They have been sent home, furloughed, laid off, or even had to you know, um, work remotely. And we've been able to coach them virtually, uh, on site, or if they're working remotely. Thankfully, I can tell you that we're almost back. We're almost back to having the majority of our employees working. Some of them who were working more hours are working less hours, but we have about over 50% that are back to where they were before and are working um, you know, full time and, and uh, are, are close to it. So thankfully that happened. But as time went on, we developed what's called the DMF Academy. And the DMF Academy is very um, focused on job skills. And so it's, we pick the cohorts. The job coaches are the ones who decide who goes into the cohort according to skills that they feel they need to learn. And um, those are more, like I said, skill building. So we do Excel, we do Word, uh, we're now doing Spanish, um, email etiquette, office skills. And so they're put into these cohorts and they follow the same class for five, to six, five, five, five weeks. And then after those five weeks are finished, they go into the next class. So that's what we've been doing lately. It's very effective. They get a certificate that they can take to work and say, look, I passed. Excel. Uh, it's not the Excel that you would take, you know, at a university level, but it's functioning Excel, which makes them a more productive employee for the organization. The Des Moines Foundation provides the support needed for successful businesses and young adults with unique abilities to work together and achieve successful employment outcomes. Learn the business benefits of becoming our next employer partner. 